In this video, you will learn how to install and set up an IQ connected filtration monitoring device on a Donaldson PulseJet collector. If at any point you need installation assistance, please contact us at 833-310-0017 or IQ support at Donaldson.com. Before installation, please read the manual as it contains specific precautions for worker safety. Then unpack the boxes and make sure it includes the gateway, cellular antenna, magnets, differential pressure tubing straight fitting, compressed air straight fitting, T fittings for differential pressure tubing, and the AC-DC power supply. The differential pressure tubing fittings may already be on the gateway, but if not, screw them in by hand into the dirty and clean ports. Also inside the box will be a quick start guide. Some collectors will come with the gateway already mounted on it, so in that case you'll only need to unpack one box. If the gateway didn't come installed, you'll need to select the mounting area. The gateway should be installed in a convenient location that does not interfere with any safety systems or the normal operation and maintenance of the collector. Typically it's installed on the side of the collector, which is what we'll be showing in this video, but you could also install it on a magnetic surface, such as the control panel cover. When you're selecting the mounting area, keep in mind your vendors will need access to a compressed airline, electricity, and differential pressure clean and dirty tubing lines. Also, the preferred location is as high as feasible to increase the cellular signal strength. Before we install the gateway, know that there are three typical scenarios for wiring power to it. You can use 24 volts DC from the control panel. You won't need the AC-DC power supply in this case. You can use the AC voltage from the control panel. 110 volts is the most common, but 240 works as well. Or you can power it externally using AC voltage, which is what we will be showing in this video. Once you have selected the mounting area, it's time to install the gateway. First, ensure all energy sources, including electricity and compressed air, are put into a safe condition by following your facility's approved hazardous energy control procedures. Verify the device surface is clean and dry and apply the magnets, which have pre-installed adhesive, one in each corner. Also, you're going to need to put two on the AC-DC power supply. As the adhesive is curing, it will take about 20 minutes. Tighten the fittings up on the side of the gateway. Loosen the screws on the cover and remove it. Check to make sure that the LED tubes are pushed down. Sometimes they can come loose during shipping. Next, connect the AC-DC power supply to the gateway. Unscrew the nut and thread the black and red wires from the power supply into the gateway. You may need to trim the wires to ensure that no bare wire is exposed inside the gateway. Connect the red wire to the gateway. It goes on the far left hand screw terminal marked with a plus. You can also connect the power supply after the gateway has been installed, but you may find it easier to do this on a cart. Connect the black wire to the gateway next to that screw terminal marked with a negative. Tighten the nut so that it's secure. And put the cover back on. Remove the metallic keeper and insulator from the magnets on the gateway and mount the device. Don't forget to consider accessibility and position as needed. Then remove the metallic keeper and insulator from the magnets on the AC-DC power supply and mount it to the collector. Once the gateway and power supply are in place, the next step is to complete the electrical connections. In this video, we'll be wiring the power supply to the junction box provided on the side of the collector. If the gateway and power supply came pre-installed on the collector, it's most likely wired in the same way, into the junction box. 
but know that you can wire the junction box to either the control panel or, like we'll be doing, an external power source. Remove the junction box cover and remove the switch. Insert the wire into the junction box and tighten the nut. A licensed electrician will connect the brown and blue wires to the switch and the switch to an external power source. Next, we will connect the differential pressure lines and the compressed air line. To connect the compressed air line, you will need the 1 quarter inch NPT fitting and the solid blue tubing. On the DFE, Donaldson provides a port for the compressed air tubing. Install the NPT fitting onto the port. If the dust collector doesn't provide a compressed air port, you will need to use an unused port on the compressed air manifold. If no ports are available, the fitting can be installed in a T for incoming air to the manifold. Then install the solid blue tubing onto the port and onto the gateway. When you're done, restore the compressed air supply. Next, identify the clean air and dirty air ports. In general, the fan will be located on the clean side and the filters on the dirty side, but reference the dust collector manual if you need assistance identifying them. The DFE has two sets of ports, one on each side of the collector. This set will be connected to the gateway. The other set will be connected to the control panel. When installing a gateway on a collector that only has one set of ports, you will need to use the T-fittings to split them so they can go to both the gateway and the control panel. Insert a T-fitting into each port. Using the translucent blue tubing, connect the dirty air pressure sense line to the dirty port of the gateway and the clean air pressure sense line into the clean port of the gateway. Next, install any optional sensors, such as rotary airlock or bin level. We don't have any for this installation, but if you do and you need help installing them, make sure to contact us. The next step is final assembly. Connect the cellular antenna and hand tighten, and then restore power. Once the gateway is energized, it will start to go through its startup routine, which means that the lights will go from red to orange to green. This may take several minutes. The gateway is properly connected to the IQ cloud if the power, IQ service connectivity, and cellular strength LEDs are green. The data transmission LED may blank periodically as data is transferred. Now it's time to collect some information that you will need to register and activate the device in the IQ portal. You will need the gateway ID, which can be found on the bottom left-hand side of the gateway cover. You will need the name of the company, which is called the enterprise name in the IQ portal. You will need the name and address of the facility where you're installing the gateway. Remember that for many large organizations, the name of the company and the name of the facility will be different. For example, Donaldson is the name of the company and the Baldwin plant is the name of the facility. And then you will need to know some information about the dust collector, which you can find on the nameplate, typically located on the side of the collector, including the machine name, the manufacturer, the dust collector's model number, and the serial number. You will also need to know the number of pulse valves and the filter part number, which can be found on the nameplate. You may want to double check the filter itself just in case the type of filter was changed from the original design. The part number is etched onto the flange of the filter. And finally, you will need the user information for the employee at the company's facility who will be responsible for accessing the IQ portal. The last step is to activate and register the device in the IQ portal. Start by navigating to DonaldsonIQ.com. If you have never logged in before, please call the customer care team at 833-310-0017 to set up your account. Once you have an account, click on Sign In. Once you have signed in, click on Gateway Activation and enter in the Gateway ID. And then click on Check. Make sure that the status says Connected. Then click on Next. Enter in the enterprise name. I'm just going to type in fake company for training purposes for this video to protect the privacy of the customer and then click on next. Here's where you're going to type in the facility name and address and then click on next. Now type in the name of the machine, the machine type, the number of pulse valves, the manufacturer, model number, serial number, and filter part number. As you can see I'm not putting in actual information since this is a training video 
but please know that it's very important that the information you enter is accurate. You can also upload images of the collector, which we highly recommend, and then click on Next. In this section, you can set alerts for sensors. Let's start with compressed air. Click on the Configure icon. Notice that you can click on the I icons for more information, and then click on the X to close it. Type in the sensor description, which is how the sensor will be displayed in the dashboard. Next, we're going to set the alarm levels. There are four levels that you can set, two low settings, L2 and L3, and two high settings, H2 and H3. This can be customized for the customer as needed, but as a general guideline, most dust collectors will use between 80 and 100 PSI. So we'd set the low 3 at 65, the low 2 at 75, the high 2 at 105, and the high 3 at 115. This means if the compressed air drops down to 75 PSI, an alarm will be triggered and the customer notified. And if it dips below 65, a secondary alarm would trigger. On the high side, if it goes above 105, it would alarm. And again, if it goes above 115. Time delays are used to prevent nuisance alarms. So an alarm would go off if the data point is outside the threshold for time greater than the configured delay. We generally recommend a 240 minute delay on the low two and the high two, and then hit save when you're done. Next, we have differential pressure. Click on the configure icon. Type in the sensor description. Unless they have air quality permits, we typically only set the high level alarms. We often see H2 set to 5 and H3 set to 6. And again, we recommend a 240 minute delay on H2. Click on Save. Next, click on the Configure icon for relative airflow. This one's a little harder to set initially because it really depends on the machine. Generally, L2 and H2 numbers are 15% off whatever the average airflow is. The L3 and H3 are typically 25% off whatever the average is. And again, we do a 240 minute delay on L2 and H2. But until the machine's running in an operation, the customer may not want to set these alarms until they know the average. Another option is to input numbers based on the design airflow and the customer can change it later. But since our collector is brand new, I'm going to leave these blank for now and let the customer input them later. And finally, we have gateway temperature. Click on the configure icon. We generally don't set the temperature alarms since they're based on the ambient temperature, but they could be set if the customer was concerned about it. I'm not going to set an alarm for this customer. Then below that section is where you would input the information for optional sensors, which again, we don't have for this particular installation. Now that I'm done, click on the next button on the bottom right. And here's where you'll input the contact information for the employee who'll be managing the portal. The employee will receive an email with registration information so they can access the portal. So it's really important that you fill this out accurately. When you're finished, click submit. A member of the customer care team will finish everything up on their end. They will also reach out to the employee whose information you inputted and schedule a time to train them on how to use the portal. If you have questions about installation or need support, please contact us at 833-310-0017 or iqsupport at donaldson.com.